situation with ragas being exciting and yet yoga being common. So one of them is also from the Yoga Sutras. He says, Abhyasa vairagyapyam tad nirodaha. So he says, Patanjali says, this no rodaha, that nirodaha, that process of stilling, has to be accompanied by two principles. One, with practice. A lot of practice. It doesn't come just like this. You have to do it a lot. But when you're doing it, you can't get all excited and, you know, wrapped up in, you know, I'm doing this, this yoga and, you know, I'm going to practice every day and then I, my mind's going to be all calm and ready and, and still after that. No. You have to have this vairagya involved. And actually, you can see the word raga right in there, which is, which is also interesting. But this is vairagya. So you want not passion, but dispassion. You want to be unattached in a way from this kind of intense practice that you're giving. So this is just one insight to me about how these kind of polar opposite things function together. So at the one hand, you have to be dedicated, focused, and, and, and put in a lot of energy and practice. But at the, at the same time, you can't get too carried away and attracted to the you know, end result of feeling like you're going to get into this calm place. So that was one idea that I had to kind of resolve this idea. The next idea is actually the true resolution of this idea of how does raga, something that excites you, actually going to help you in something like yoga, which is supposed to calm you? And this problem is not a new problem. This is not a new problem. And Abhinava Gupta, who is a great philosopher, very famous Kashmiri philosopher, 11th century, he was also a very famous ta tantric practitioner, so talk about a subjective thinker. He was one of the one of the greats who was a philosopher, but also a practitioner too, and that, that's a very important point. So he had insight into these things. And he also probably had to wrestle with this idea of how does this thing of rasa, this, this aesthetic experience of rasa, created by, in this case, let's say a raga, how does that relate to my practice of calming myself as a practitioner of yoga? And what he basically came up with was this idea of the shanta rasa, and shanta, shanti, we, you know, is peace, is tranquility. And what he says, basically, is that in the end analysis of this aesthetic experience, you know, be it your happiness, you're your totally getting into the sadness of one different raga, whatever it is, that experience, after it's kind of moved through you, will actually leave you with a great sense of peace, with shanti. At the end of, end of the experience, it is shanti. You know, the Mahabharata, which is a great epic of, of India, you know, and you know, it has tons of stuff in, in the Bharata. And it goes and tells lots of stories, but the main story is these two warring cousins, uh, groups of cousins who you know, are constantly at odds with each other, and then at the end of the Mahabharata they have a huge battle, everybody dies, it's, it's horrible and catastrophic, and yet Abhinava Gupta says the end result of the Bharata the end rasa, at the end of all of this, is shant. And this, you know, related to me and also how, you know, kind of, we don't, I don't want to make too many comparisons, but the idea of catharsis, you know, the idea that, you know, you're purging sometimes, getting the stuff out of you too. You know, we have to experience these things, and when we do, they, they, when, they, when they go through us, in the end, we actually feel a great sense of calm and peace. And so, even though the raga is exciting and, you know, as you'll see, it starts slow and it gets fast and it, it can be very, you know, excitable and, and very passionate, in the end, your feeling should be one of calm. Like, you should feel at peace when, when hopefully I'll have done my job properly and, and you will feel that peace. So.